Has anyone ever been to a wedding where someone actually objected? And if so, how did that go? Story 1. I wasn't at the wedding myself, so this story is secondhand. But it's one of those wild tales that makes you feel like you were right there, watching the whole thing unfold like a soap opera in real time. It happened right after the wedding, during the reception, where the champagne was flowing, the band was playing, and everyone was in that festive post-ceremony glow. Now, at first, everything was going fine. People were mingling, having a good time. The happy couple had done the rounds thanking guests, and things were heading toward that easy, laid-back phase of the night, where everyone's settling into the party. That is, until someone noticed that the groom was missing. At first, it wasn't a huge deal. Grooms disappear sometimes, maybe for a quick breather or to fix their tie or something. No one thought too much of it at first, but time kept passing, and no one could seem to track him down. Then the whispers started. You know how these things go. Someone asks someone else where the groom was, and before long, there's a quiet buzz rippling through the crowd. It wasn't a huge wedding, so it didn't take long before just about everyone was looking around, eyebrows raised, wondering where the man of the hour had disappeared to. And that's when someone, a cousin, I think, went outside to check the limo. Now, what they found out there wasn't exactly what you'd expect at a reception, and it definitely wasn't what anyone wanted to find. The groom was in the limo all right, but not alone. He was there, in the back seat, caught in the act of getting far too close with one of the bridesmaids. Not just any bridesmaid either, but one of the bride's closest friends. It was like the air got sucked out of the place when word got back to the bride. You can imagine how it spread like wildfire hushed voices passing the news along until it reached her ears. The poor woman was still in her wedding dress, all smiles up until that moment, completely unaware of the betrayal happening just outside. But when she found out, man, she didn't fall apart or run away sobbing. No, this woman had a spine of steel. She marched right back into that reception hall, not bothering to fix her makeup or even smooth out her dress. She headed straight for the stage where the band was playing. Without missing a beat, she stepped up, stopped the band mid-song, and took the microphone. The room, which had been full of laughter and conversation just moments before, went dead silent as soon as they saw the look on her face. You could have heard a pin drop. She didn't mince words. She didn't give a long, drawn-out explanation or burst into tears. Nope. She just laid it all out in the plainest terms you can imagine. She told everyone there what had just happened, flat out, how the groom had been caught out in the limo with one of the bridesmaids. And she didn't stop there. She named the bridesmaid, right there in front of everyone, with the coldest, steeliest voice you've ever heard. I can't even imagine the shock. People were probably sitting there clutching their drinks, jaws on the floor. It was one of those moments where you don't know whether to look away out of sheer awkwardness or stay locked in, fascinated by the unfolding disaster, and she wasn't done yet. After outing the guilty parties, she went on to announce with all the composure of a seasoned news anchor that the wedding was officially over. Annulled. The marriage done. It hadn't even lasted a full day, and she was already putting it in the past. She even said that all the wedding gifts would be returned. Every last one. I mean, talk about taking charge of a situation. In a moment where a lot of people would have fallen apart, she stood up, grabbed the mic, and ended the whole thing right then and there. I don't think anyone in that room could believe what they were witnessing. Some were probably thinking they should have brought popcorn, because it was playing out like a drama you'd only expect to see on TV. Others were likely feeling second-hand embarrassment for the groom, and that poor bridesmaid who probably wanted to crawl into a hole and never come out again. But it wasn't over yet. The bride didn't storm out in a fit of rage. She didn't run off into the night. No, she stayed. She stuck around, making sure that everyone knew exactly what was going to happen next. She wasn't about to let this betrayal ruin her, or let them think she was defeated. She was in control every step of the way. Eventually, she did leave, of course. But when she walked out, it wasn't with her head hanging down. She walked out with her head held high, her back straight, leaving everyone else to pick up the pieces of what had just gone down. Story two. It wasn't a wedding or anything celebratory like that. No, this was a funeral, my uncle's funeral to be exact. Funerals are supposed to be somber, reflective, and maybe even a little healing. But let me tell you, this one took a wild turn that no one could have expected. Now I should have known something was off when I spotted my uncle's ex-wife sitting in the back though I didn't see her at first. She wasn't exactly invited, but there she was. If I had known she'd made her way into the service, I might have prepared myself for some sort of scene. You know, just a heads up that we were about to veer into uncharted territory. But as it was, I was clueless. I didn't even see her come in, and frankly, I was trying to focus on saying my goodbyes, as was everyone else. The service itself started out as normal as you'd expect. 
A few somber speeches, the pastor offering words of comfort, and relatives dabbing at their eyes with tissues. It's a strange thing sitting in a funeral thinking about life and death. The air is thick with grief, but there's also a kind of peace in knowing that someone's life is being honored. Well, that peace didn't last long. Out of nowhere, my uncle's ex-wife, let's call her Carol, decides she's going to put on a show. Now, Carol, bless her heart, wasn't exactly the most stable of individuals, and when she left the family, she took a pretty sharp turn towards some questionable spiritual practices. By questionable, I mean she got involved with what was essentially a local cult led by this self-proclaimed pastor who thought he had the power to channel divine energy or whatever. Long story short, she was in deep. Anyway, out of nowhere, Carol stands up, marches right up to my uncle's casket and starts yelling. I mean yelling. At first, no one knew what was happening. We thought maybe she was overcome with grief or having some sort of breakdown. But no, this was something else entirely. She stood over his body, her voice sharp and loud, commanding, James Lester, raise up. Now let me pause right here to say a couple of things. First, I didn't even know my uncle's middle name was Lester. So imagine sitting there, in the middle of a funeral, already feeling a little numb, and suddenly hearing someone you barely recognize shouting what sounds like a stranger's name at your deceased relative. I was confused. I think most of us were. It took a second for it to click that she was talking to my uncle, who was very much not responding. Secondly, this wasn't a one-time thing. Carol didn't just shout once and give up. No, she was persistent. She kept yelling, James Lester, raise up! I command you in the name of the Lord, rise! And then, because apparently this kind of spectacle wasn't bizarre enough, in comes the cult leader. He wasn't some quiet, unassuming guy in the background either. He swaggered up beside her, arms raised like he was about to lead a tent revival, and started yelling too. Together, they were putting on a full-on resurrection performance, right there in front of all of us, standing over my uncle's casket. You can't make this stuff up. Now at this point, people were shifting uncomfortably in their seats, glancing around like, is this actually happening? I swear, some folks thought it might have been part of the service for a second before they realized this was not on the program. My family, bless them, we just sat there stunned, like normal people at a normal funeral who suddenly found themselves in the middle of what felt like some bizarre religious intervention. It was hard to process in real time. So there we were, watching this weird, awkward, completely inappropriate scene unfold. Carol and this cult guy were yelling, my uncle's body was laying there as still and dead as could be, and everyone else just sat there frozen, like they couldn't believe what they were witnessing. I mean, what do you even do in a situation like that? For a brief, surreal moment, I think Carol genuinely believed that this was going to work, that my uncle, the same stubborn, gruff man who barely listened to people when he was alive, was suddenly going to heed her call from beyond the grave and sit up in his casket. But unsurprisingly, my uncle didn't budge. He wasn't going anywhere, least of all rising up because Carol decided to make a scene. I think even if he could have responded, he would have just crossed his arms, rolled his eyes, and gone back to resting in peace. Eventually, the funeral staff had to intervene. I could see one of them, a young guy in his 20s, looking like he was about to lose it, trying to keep a straight face as he approached this shouting duo. He and another staff member quietly, but firmly, escorted Carol and her pastor friend out of the funeral home. I'll give them credit. They didn't make a fuss as they were let out, though I imagine they were disappointed their miracle didn't quite go as planned. The whole thing left us sitting there in stunned silence for a moment. No one knew whether to laugh, cry, or just pretend it didn't happen. The pastor at the podium kind of fumbled with his words for a bit before finding a way to steer us back into the service, but the damage was done. The tension was there. We were all just trying to wrap our heads around what we'd just witnessed. I've never told this story outside the family because, honestly, it makes us sound insane. I mean, who has a funeral where someone objects to the death? It's the kind of thing you hear about in a joke. Or a movie. But I lived it. My uncle's funeral a day meant to honor his life, turned into a sideshow, complete with a failed attempt at resurrection. Story three. So this was a Catholic wedding I went to, and let me tell you, it was one of those events where everything seemed like it was running smoothly until, well, let's just say things took an unexpected turn. Now, if you've ever been to a Catholic wedding, you know the drill. There's a certain reverence to the whole thing. Lots of ceremony, tradition, and formality. The bride and groom were standing up there looking like the picture of perfection the bride in her beautiful gown, the groom in a sharp suit. The church was packed with family, friends, and probably a few people who just wanted the free food at the reception. The priest was at the altar, leading the service, and everything was going as you'd expect. 
That is, until we got to the part where the priest asked that age-old question, If anyone here has any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Now, typically, this is one of those moments that passes without incident. I mean, who actually objects to a wedding in real life, right? Everyone's sitting there, holding their breath for a few seconds, but nothing ever happens. It's just part of the ceremony, except this time something did happen. One of the groomsmen, standing up there next to the groom, decided that this was his moment to, well, get a little attention. He didn't object outright, but he did the next best or worst thing. He let out this very loud, very deliberate throat clearing. Not just a quick, subtle one either. No, it was one of those long, exaggerated throat clears that dragged on forever, like he was clearing out years of dust and cobwebs in one go. It started low, then built into a sound that echoed through the church. You could hear it bouncing off the stained glass windows. At first, there was this moment of stunned silence, like everyone was trying to process whether this was really happening. Then, almost all at once, the crowd erupted into laughter. You know that kind of laughter where people are trying to hold it in because it's not really appropriate for the setting, but they just can't help it? Yeah, it was that kind of laughter. I could see shoulders shaking, people covering their mouths, trying to keep it together. Even the priest cracked a little smile, and the groom was clearly trying not to lose it. Everyone, that is, except the bride's grandmother. Now, this wasn't just any grandmother. She was the bride's Italian grandmother. You know the type. Old school, fiery, and not one to suffer fools gladly. She was sitting in the front row, arms crossed, watching the whole thing unfold with a look on her face that could have melted the candles on the altar. As soon as that laughter rippled through the church, she stood up with this look of absolute fury. She didn't say a word at first, but you could tell she wasn't about to let this go. I remember seeing her grab her handbag, one of those sturdy, no-nonsense bags that looks like it's been through the wars, and march right up the aisle toward the groomsmen. You'd think she was heading into battle the way she moved. I swear the entire church went from laughter to dead silence in a heartbeat. It was like watching a storm roll in. The groomsman, poor guy, didn't know what was about to hit him, literally. He was still standing there, smirking, probably thinking he'd just pulled off the joke of the century. But when Grandma reached him, she didn't hesitate. She swung that handbag like a seasoned pro and whacked him right across the arm. And I'm not talking about a playful tap, either. She laid into him with the full force of decades of Italian disapproval. The sound of the handbag hitting him was almost as loud as the throat clearing had been. The poor guy yelped in surprise, his smirk vanishing instantly. She started shouting at him in rapid-fire Italian, and while I don't speak the language, I'm pretty sure none of it was complimentary. Her words flew out like bullets, sharp and angry, and you could feel every syllable sting. She pointed a finger at him, and it was like she was cursing him, or at least making sure he knew exactly what kind of trouble he'd caused. The rest of us were sitting there in stunned silence, wide-eyed, watching this tiny old woman take down a full-grown man with nothing more than her handbag and a lifetime of pent-up fury. Even the groom, who had been struggling not to laugh moments earlier, looked like he wanted to sink into the floor. The bride? Well, I'm not sure whether she was more horrified or secretly pleased. After all, no one wants their big day turned into a comedy show, especially not by one of their own groomsmen. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a minute or two, the grandmother finally gave him one last scolding, turned on her heel, and marched back to her seat, handbag swinging triumphantly at her side. You could practically hear the entire church exhale in relief when she sat down. The priest, bless him, somehow managed to pull the service back on track, though there was a definite awkwardness in the air. The groomsman, for his part, stood there quietly for the rest of the ceremony, red-faced and probably terrified to move. No one was laughing anymore, except maybe in their heads, because let's be honest, it was kind of hilarious. Story four. So this story starts at a rehearsal dinner for one of my coworkers. Now you'd think rehearsal dinners are supposed to be easygoing, right? Just a chance for everyone to relax, share some nice words, and get excited for the big day. But this one? This was far from your average smooth sailing pre-wedding event. It had all the signs of incoming drama. Family tension, awkward toasts, and more baggage than you'd see at an airport. It all started when my coworker's mother stood up to give her toast. You could feel the room shift the second she rose from her chair. There was an air of formality about her, like she was gearing up for something big and not in a good way. I wasn't there for the rehearsal dinner, but from what I heard, the atmosphere was already a little tense. People were being polite, trying to enjoy the evening, but there was this underlying sense that something was off. Now his mother, let's just say she wasn't exactly a fan of the bride-to-be, it wasn't one of those situations where she quietly disapproved, but kept it to herself for the sake of her son's happiness. 
Oh no, she was vocal, very vocal. And that night, she decided it was the perfect opportunity to let the entire room know exactly how she felt. Apparently, her toast started off fairly normal. A few polite words, some nods to the future, the usual stuff. But then she took a hard left turn. In front of the couple's closest friends and family, she launched into this tirade about how the bride, her son's soon-to-be wife, was, in her words, a dirty worker who wasn't good enough for her son. She said it plain as day, right there, with everyone watching. You can imagine the reaction. People were stunned, their forks halfway to their mouths, not knowing whether to laugh nervously or pretend they didn't just hear what they heard. A few folks tried to diffuse the situation with awkward chuckles, hoping maybe it was some sort of bizarre joke. But no, she wasn't joking. She doubled down, essentially saying that her son deserved better and implying that marrying this woman was a mistake. It was one of those moments where you could feel the tension crackling in the air. I heard the bride's face went pale, and you could see the anger simmering beneath the surface. The poor groom, my co-worker, just sat there, looking like he wanted to sink into his chair and disappear. I mean, what do you even do in a situation like that? Your own mother publicly slamming the woman you're about to marry, right there in front of everyone? Thankfully, the toast ended. People were trying to pick up the pieces of the night after that, making small talk and forcing smiles, but it was clear that the damage had been done. The bride and groom left that rehearsal dinner with more than a few unresolved feelings, that's for sure. The next day was the actual wedding, which I attended. After hearing what went down at the rehearsal, I half expected some more drama. And well, I wasn't wrong. The ceremony itself started off beautifully. The bride looked stunning, the groom was holding it together. And for a moment, you could almost forget the mess from the night before. The priest was going through the motions, reading the vows, and it seemed like everything was finally on track. But then we got to that dreaded part. If anyone has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. I swear, the second those words left the priest's mouth, the entire room tensed up. Everyone was holding their breath, waiting, hoping, praying that no one would say a word. But of course, that didn't happen. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw his mother start to stand up. And let me tell you, the look on her face was pure determination. You could see it in her eyes. She was ready to make a scene ready to throw a wrench into the whole thing and stop the wedding right then and there. It was like she'd been waiting for this moment, planning her next move after the disaster of the rehearsal dinner. But before she could get a word out, her daughter, my co-worker's sister, jumped into action. She reached out, grabbed her mom by the arm and shushed her. Not a gentle, let's talk later kind of shush either. No, this was an aggressive, no-nonsense, sit down right now before you ruin everything kind of shush. You could tell she wasn't messing around. She was done with the drama done with the embarrassment, and clearly wasn't about to let her mom wreck the ceremony. The mom looked like she might fight back for a second, like she was about to ignore her daughter and keep going. But after a few tense moments, she closed her mouth, grabbed her purse, and stormed out of the church. Just like that, she was gone. The priest didn't even skip a beat. He continued with the ceremony like nothing had happened, but you could feel the shift in the room. Everyone was still on edge, hearts from that near miss of a wedding disaster. The groom, poor guy, looked like he was about to pass out from the stress. And the bride? She held it together. But you could tell she was fuming underneath that calm exterior. The rest of the ceremony went on without a hitch. But that moment? Oh, it hung in the air like a bad smell. Everyone was whispering about it afterward, quietly exchanging glances, but no one dared bring it up directly. It was like there was this silent agreement to pretend it hadn't happened, even though it was the one thing everyone was thinking about. As for the mother, she didn't come back. She missed the rest of the ceremony, the reception, the whole deal. I guess she decided that if her son wasn't going to listen to her, then she wasn't sticking around for the rest of the festivities. Story 5. So I've got a buddy who plays in a band. They're one of those groups that does all kinds of gigs. Weddings, birthday parties, corporate events, you name it. They're good too, real crowd pleasers. They always have these crazy stories from the events they play. But this one, this one takes the cake. A while back, they got hired to play a birthday party. Seemed simple enough. They show up, set up their gear, and get ready for a night of music and celebration. But as it turns out, this wasn't going to be your average birthday bash. Nope, this was something entirely different. Now here's where things get interesting. Unbeknownst to pretty much everyone, including my buddy's band, this birthday party was actually a cover for a much bigger surprise. The guy throwing the party, the boyfriend, had secretly planned to propose to his girlfriend during the event. And not just propose, oh no, that would be too easy. He had gone all out and planned an entire wedding to take place right then and there. 
He was going for the ultimate surprise. Pop the question, then immediately jump into a full-blown ceremony. No time to waste, no second guessing, just straight from, will you marry me, to I do. The band had no clue what was about to go down. They thought they were just playing some party tunes, keeping the guests entertained. The crowd was a mix of friends and family, and from what I heard, the atmosphere was casual but festive, like everyone was waiting for something to happen, though they weren't quite sure what. At some point in the night, the birthday cake comes out. Everyone's cheering and the boyfriend takes the microphone. My buddy thought he was just going to give a toast or thank everyone for coming, but no. This guy grabs the mic and calls his girlfriend up in front of everyone. The crowd gets quiet. There's that excited, tense hush, the kind you get when you know something big is about to happen, but you're not sure what. Then, in front of all their friends, family, and the band, he gets down on one knee. Out comes the ring, and he asks her to marry him, right there on the spot. You can probably picture it. He's all smiles, probably thinking he's just pulled off the most romantic gesture ever. I mean, surprise proposals are already a big deal, but this? This was on a whole other level. And here's the kicker. As soon as he asks the question, he starts gesturing toward the back of the venue, where there's a whole setup ready to go for the wedding ceremony. Apparently, he'd hired a justice of the peace, set up some decorations, even got a cake that said, Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs., all without her knowing a thing. He had it all planned out. After she said yes, they'd have a quick little wedding, and boom, they'd be married by the end of the night. But, uh, that's not how it played out. The girlfriend, who up until this point had probably just been enjoying what she thought was a normal birthday party, looked stunned. Like completely blindsided, the color drained from her face, and she just stood there, staring at him, as if trying to figure out if this was real or some kind of elaborate prank. You could feel the whole room holding its breath, waiting for her to respond. The guy was still down on one knee, smiling like he'd just pulled off the greatest surprise in the history of romance. And then she said no. Not just no, but no. Like a hard, definitive no, this is not happening. The poor guy's face went from confident to confused in about half a second. He stood up, stammering, trying to salvage the situation. I think he thought maybe she was just overwhelmed, that she needed a second to process. But no, she wasn't having any of it. She said flat out that she didn't want to get married, especially not like this. In fact, she was more upset about the whole ambush-style proposal than anything. You could tell she felt completely trapped, like she'd been set up in front of all these people with no way out except to publicly reject him. At this point, the room was dead silent. No one knew what to do. People were shifting in their seats, glancing around, trying to avoid eye contact with the couple. My buddy told me the band was standing there, instruments in hand, looking at each other like, Do we keep playing? Do we stop? What the hell are we supposed to do now? The boyfriend kept trying to talk to her, saying things like, But it's all set up. We can get married right now. Isn't this what you wanted? But the more he talked, the worse it got. She was not on board with the idea, not one bit. And the fact that he had gone behind her back to plan an entire wedding without even asking her? Yeah, that didn't sit well with her at all. Finally, she just turned around and left. She walked right out of the party, leaving him standing there in front of all those people, holding the ring. My buddy said the guy looked like he'd been hit by a truck. It was brutal. No one knew what to do. Half the guests were still sitting there in shock, and the other half were quietly slipping out the door, trying to avoid the impending awkwardness. The band, meanwhile, was left standing on stage, still not sure whether they should start playing again or just pack up and leave. They ended up playing a few soft tunes to break the tension, but most of the crowd had already bailed at that point. Story 6 Okay, so this might sound ridiculous, but I swear it happened. I was just a kid at the time, and it's one of those memories that's been seared into my brain, probably because it was equal parts terrifying and hilarious in hindsight. The story is about my aunt's wedding, her first wedding attempt, I should say. Now my aunt, bless her heart, is very religious. I'm talking the type of woman who sees signs from above in her everyday life, like finding the shape of a cross in her breakfast toast or thinking a rainbow is a direct message from God. So naturally, when it came time for her wedding, she wanted to make sure everything was done in a proper church ceremony. She and my uncle were all set to get married at this beautiful old local church. You know the kind. Stained glass windows, big wooden doors, creaky old pews. The whole nine yards. The day itself was perfect. Blue skies, warm weather, just a picture-perfect day for a wedding. The guests were all there, the flowers were arranged, and the bride was radiant. Everyone was in good spirits, especially my aunt, who was practically glowing with excitement. She was marrying the love of her life in her beloved church, surrounded by friends and family. What could go wrong, right? 
Well, you know that part of the ceremony where the priest asks, If anyone here has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. It's usually just a formality. One of those things where everyone holds their breath for a second, and then the ceremony just moves right along. But not this time. Right as the priest said those words, as if on cue there was this enormous crack of lightning. I'm talking like the kind of lightning strike that feels like it's right on top of you. It came out of nowhere. One second, the skies were clear, and the next, this lightning bolt hit somewhere near the church, close enough that the thunderclap that followed was deafening. I remember sitting there wide-eyed as the windows of the church rattled so hard I thought they might shatter. Even the floor seemed to vibrate. The whole congregation jumped, startled by the sheer power of it. The timing was insane. It couldn't have been more perfect, or, in this case, more disastrous. Now, most of us just figured it was a freak coincidence. One of those things that happens when nature decides to get a little dramatic. But not my aunt. Oh no, she took it as a sign. And not just any sign. She was convinced it was a divine message. Straight from the heavens, telling her not to go through with the wedding. I can still picture the look on her face. She went from glowing with happiness to wide-eyed and pale in an instant. Her mouth was hanging open, and you could practically see the gears turning in her head. It was like she was suddenly piecing it all together. The thunder, the lightning, the timing. In her mind, there was no doubt. God himself was objecting to her marriage. And that was it. She called the whole thing off right then and there. Right in the middle of the ceremony. The poor priest was standing there, probably just as stunned as the rest of us. My uncle, bless his heart, was standing at the altar looking like someone had just pulled the rug out from under him. I think he tried to say something, maybe to reassure her that it was just a coincidence, but she wasn't hearing it. She was absolutely convinced that this was a sign, and she wasn't about to ignore what she believed was a direct message from above. So what did she do? She walked out of her own wedding. Yep, just turned and left the church, leaving my uncle standing there, still holding the ring. The guests didn't know what to do. I remember people looking around at each other, whispering, wondering if this was really happening. It was one of the most awkward moments I've ever witnessed. The wedding was officially called off, and the rest of the day became a blur of confusion, embarrassment, and a lot of whispered conversations. People were trying to make sense of it, but really, there was no making sense of it. My uncle was understandably devastated, but he was also a patient man, and he figured maybe she just needed time to process. Now, here's where the story takes an interesting turn. Fast forward a year, and despite everything that happened, my aunt and uncle decided to give it another shot. They were still in love, after all, and a little lightning strike wasn't going to stop that. So, they planned a new wedding. Same church, same guests, same everything. But this time, my aunt had one condition. They were skipping the speak now or forever hold your peace part. No chances for any heavenly objections this time around. The day came, and wouldn't you know it? The weather was perfect again. Sunshine, not a cloud in the sky, and most importantly, no lightning in sight. The ceremony went off without a hitch, no divine interruptions, and they were finally married. To this day, they're still together, happily married, and laugh about the whole ordeal. Story 7 I've been to a lot of weddings in my time, but there's one that stands out for all the wrong reasons. It's not often that someone actually objects during a wedding. You know, that moment in the ceremony when the officiant says, if anyone has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. It's mostly just a formality, a relic from the old days. But every now and then, someone takes that invitation seriously. And in this case, things went from normal to absolutely explosive in the blink of an eye. Let me set the scene. The wedding was beautiful. The kind of event you could tell had been meticulously planned down to the tiniest detail. The bride and groom, both of whom I've known for years, looked amazing. The groom was an old friend of mine, and over time, I'd become good friends with his bride, too. They were a great couple, and this was supposed to be the happiest day of their lives. The ceremony had been going smoothly up until that point. There was a soft murmur from the guests, the usual shuffling of feet and hushed whispers you hear during a wedding, but nothing out of the ordinary. Everyone was smiling, caught up in the love of the moment. The bridesmaids were lined up, all of them looking radiant in their matching dresses, and the whole vibe was just... Perfect. Then came the moment. The officiant got to the part of the ceremony where they ask if anyone objects. You could feel the room collectively hold its breath for that one second. Everyone always does, even though no one really expects anything to happen. Well, except this time, something did happen. Out of nowhere, the mother of one of the bridesmaids jumped up from her seat and yelled, Yeah, I object! Now I know what you're thinking. This had to be some kind of joke, right? 
Maybe she was trying to get a laugh out of the crowd or something. But no, this woman wasn't joking. She was dead serious, and what she said next had everyone in the room's jaw on the floor. She pointed straight at the bride, her voice sharp and loud. You flipping stole him from her. There was no mistaking the venom in her voice. The whole room went from a quiet, reverent silence to absolute shock. People turned in their seats, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. It felt like time had frozen for a second, like everyone was processing what they'd just heard. You could feel the tension immediately. My heart was, and I wasn't even involved. But the bride? I have never seen her look more furious in my entire life. She went from calm and collected to absolutely livid in about half a second. You could see it on her face. Her cheeks flushed, her hands clenched into fists. She was ready to explode. And the poor bridesmaid, the one whose mom had just blown up the wedding, looked mortified. She didn't even have time to react before everyone's eyes were on her, waiting for her to do something. She quickly stood up from her chair, her face beat red, and started apologizing. I'm so, so sorry. You could tell she wanted to disappear right then and there, but she wasn't going to let her mom ruin the wedding. The bride didn't say a word, but you could feel the fury radiating off of her. The bridesmaid knew what had to be done, and without wasting any more time, she rushed over to her mother. The bride's stepfather, who had been standing near the back, saw what was happening and immediately jumped in to help. Between the two of them, they gently but firmly escorted the woman out of the room. I remember watching them quietly hustle her out, the mother still muttering under her breath, clearly not understanding just how out of line she was. The whole scene was like something out of a movie. Guests were shifting awkwardly in their seats, unsure if they should laugh it off or just pretend it never happened. I glanced over at the groom, who looked like he'd just been hit by a truck. He was doing his best to keep it together, but you could see the shock in his eyes, like he was wondering how things had spiraled so quickly. Once the mother was out of sight, the tension in the room still hung heavy, but the efficient, bless him, didn't miss a beat. He took a deep breath, smiled, and picked up right where he left off, like it was just another day at the office. Shall we continue? He asked, his voice light but reassuring, and slowly, you could feel the room start to relax again. People exchanged nervous glances, but the bride and groom, they were locked back in, determined not to let that moment ruin their day. And from that point on, the wedding went off without a hitch. The vows were said, the rings exchanged, and the happy couple was officially married. You could see a wave of relief wash over them as they made their way back down the aisle, hand in hand, smiles wide. They had made it through the storm, and nothing was going to take this day from them. Later at the reception, there was some quiet gossip among the guests, whispers about what had happened, but no one dared to mention it in front of the couple. The bride, understandably, was still fuming, but she put on a brave face and enjoyed the rest of her wedding day. The bridesmaid, poor thing, spent most of the night apologizing, and you could tell she felt terrible about the whole thing. As for the groom, he took it all in stride. I guess after being with the bride as long as he had, he knew that nothing, not even a public outburst like that, was going to come between them. They've always been a strong couple, and if anything, this whole ordeal just proved how solid they really were. Even now, years later, I'm still friends with both of them. They're doing great, and we laugh about that day sometimes, though it took a while before anyone could bring it up without a little awkwardness. Every time someone mentions wedding objections, we all shoot each other knowing glances like, yeah, we've seen it firsthand. Story 8. I've always known my family was a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, we're talking about two completely different worlds here, and I'm somehow stuck in the middle of it all. On one side, my dad's family are your classic East Coast wasps, the kind of folks you'd picture in tweed jackets, sipping brandy in some old study, all while regaling tales of prep school and summer vacations on Martha's Vineyard. They're the kind of people who think a day of leisure means a fox hunt followed by riding lessons, and probably a casual discussion about the stock market or family trust funds. Very proper, very composed. And then there's my mom's side, the East Texas hillbillies. We're talking about the polar opposite of the country club crowd. These folks live for their four-wheelers, shotgun weddings, and a cold beer on the front porch. My uncle, bless his heart, has managed to get two separate DUIs on a four-wheeler. I mean, who even gets one? And then there's my cousin, who decided that robbing the tropical fish store where he worked was a genius idea. They arrested him when he showed up for his next shift like nothing happened. No real exit strategy. Just, hey, I'm back for work after robbing you guys yesterday. So yeah, I've got a colorful family, to say the least. And this story is from the Texas side, so you can imagine how things go when they decide to get together for a wedding. Now, I didn't even know that the whole, does anyone object to this union? Part of the ceremony was a real thing. 
I'd only ever seen that on TV or in movies. But sure enough, I go to this cousin's wedding, one of the hillbilly side cousins, and there we are, deep in the middle of the ceremony. The preacher gets to that part, and I'm sitting there thinking, no way. People actually do this in real life. I figured it was just for drama on the screen. Apparently, though, my family didn't get the memo that it wasn't supposed to be real life. Because as soon as the preacher says it, the bride's mother makes this noise. It wasn't a full-on objection or anything. It was more like this awkward sound, kind of halfway between a grunt and a cough. But the timing couldn't have been worse. The whole church, dead silent, listening to the vows, and she just lets out this noise. And then she stands up, doesn't say a word, and walks out of the church. At this point, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what just happened? Was that an objection? Is she upset, sick, confused? Why would you leave during the vows? But she just walks right out. No explanation. Leaving this strange tension hanging in the air. Everyone's trying to pretend it didn't happen, but you could feel the discomfort spreading through the crowd like wildfire. Now this is where things take a turn for the truly bizarre. My aunt, the groom's mom, so the bride's new mother-in-law, takes this as a personal offense. In her mind, the bride's mom walking out was the ultimate act of disrespect. No talking about it, no trying to figure out why. She's just immediately offended. And instead of staying calm, or at least waiting until after the ceremony to address it, she decides right then is the perfect time to handle the situation. So what does she do? She gets up and storms out of the church in the middle of her own son's wedding vows to go confront the bride's mom. No joke. I watched this happen with my own eyes and I couldn't believe it. She just marched right out the door, ready to go have it out with her new in-law. The rest of us were sitting there in stunned silence, unsure of what to do. Do we stay? Do we follow? Is the wedding still happening? The preacher, clearly trying to maintain some semblance of dignity, powered through the rest of the ceremony, probably hoping no one else would storm off or throw a punch before they said, I do. But it wasn't over yet. Oh no, not by a long shot. After the ceremony finally wrapped up, the bride and groom were being ushered out of the church, heading toward the limo to take them to the reception. And that's when it all went downhill. I walked outside with the rest of the guests and out in the parking lot. There they were, my aunt and the bride's mom, locked in some kind of low-grade brawl. They weren't full-on punching each other, but they were definitely tangled up like two wrestlers at a rodeo. Arms flailing, hair getting pulled, both of them yelling God knows what. You couldn't make this stuff up. And just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I heard someone shout, Oh, come on! Y'all just quit it! I turn around and what do I see? My uncle, who, for the record, had been pretty quiet up until now, and the bride's father are also going at it in the foyer of the church. They were rolling around, taking swings at each other while the flipping preacher was trying to break them up. It was like some kind of tag-team wrestling match had broken out, with both sets of parents trying to settle things with their fists instead of words. I just stood there, completely dumbfounded. Like, what do you even do in a situation like that? Half of the guests were just standing around awkwardly, not wanting to get involved while the other half was either laughing or trying to stop the madness. This was the kind of thing you'd expect to see on a reality show, not at an actual wedding. Somehow, after all the fighting, the bickering, and the pure chaos of the day, the bride and groom still managed to make it to their reception, and they carried on like none of it even happened, like they hadn't just witnessed their families trying to tear each other apart. But honestly, to the surprise of absolutely no one, that marriage only lasted about two years. I mean, with a start like that, what hope did it really have? Story 9. My best friend and I were as thick as thieves growing up. But as life happens, we drew apart a little during college. It wasn't anything dramatic. Just the natural drift that happens when you go down different paths. He fell in with a wilder crowd, while I, being the responsible one, chose the fast track to get through school. I was doing this five-year program that earned me both a BA and an MBA in short order. Looking back, I think I missed out on a lot of the fun, but that's on me. After college, we started to reconnect, picking up where we'd left off, though there was still that distance. He had these new friends, and I was just dipping my toe back into the social pool. One of his newer friends, a guy I didn't know well but had met a few times, asked him to be his best man. I remember the guy, vaguely. He was a big dude, kind of an ogre in how he carried himself, rough around the edges. His fiance, on the other hand, was this sweet, almost mousy woman. They didn't seem like a natural fit, but you know, love's weird like that. I wasn't invited to the wedding, which was fine because I didn't know them that well. But my friend was fully involved. The big day rolled around, and while they were doing the whole wedding thing, I was busy at work. It was the 90s, back when the office space culture was still alive and kicking. You worked your weekends, had your TPS reports, 
and maybe went out for happy hour if you were lucky. That Saturday night, after I clocked out, I decided to swing by our usual watering hole, expecting to maybe catch up with my friend about how the wedding went. I figured he'd be at the reception or at least out celebrating with the couple and their friends. But when I walked in, there he was, sitting at the bar, disheveled, wearing a tuxedo that looked like it had been through a war, nursing a double whiskey. The whole scene was off. He had this thousand-yard stare, like something had gone horribly wrong. Hey, man, I said, sliding onto the stool next to him. How was the wedding? How was the reception, grub? He just looked at me, shook his head, and took a long sip of his drink before answering. No wedding. No reception, he muttered, his voice heavy with exhaustion. I ate dinner at Applebee's. Alone. Now I was confused. I mean, weddings don't just not happen, right? It was supposed to be a done deal. The invitations had gone out. The tuxes were rented, the flowers, the whole shebang. And here he was, sitting alone in a bar instead of celebrating with the newlyweds. Wait, what? What happened? I asked. So he starts telling me the story, and it's one of those moments where you feel like you've stumbled into someone else's nightmare. The ceremony was set to go off without a hitch, right? Everyone was there. Guests, family, the groom waiting at the altar, all the pomp and circumstance that comes with a wedding day. But when the limo arrived to pick up the bride, she didn't come directly to the church. Instead, she told the driver to take her for a few laps around the block. She needed to think. Apparently, she eventually did show up at the church, but she didn't march down the aisle. No, instead, she gathered her family together outside, away from the crowd, and made a gut-wrenching announcement. Right there, in front of everyone who mattered to her, she told the groom that the wedding wasn't happening, not that day, and not ever. She admitted that she'd been dealing with some serious stuff behind the scenes. It turns out she'd been suffering from physical and mental abuse for months, and no one really knew the extent of it. The groom, that ogre of a guy, had been controlling and manipulative, even getting her hooked on s specifically painkillers, which he referred to as candy. She was spiraling. And that day, standing outside the church, she realized she couldn't go through with it. She couldn't marry the man who had pushed her into addiction and treated her like garbage. As my friend recounted all this, he told me that only a handful of people at the wedding knew anything about the abuse or the use. It was all carefully hidden from most of the guests. But when she finally spoke her truth, it hit like a ton of bricks. The groom, hearing this, lost his mind. He went into a full-blown rage, screaming, cursing, trying to charge at her. The crowd was in shock. But thankfully, some of the men and women in the group, my friend included, stepped in and held him back, keeping him from doing something even worse. It was chaos, pure and simple. My friend's eyes were distant as he told me all this, like he was still trying to process it. She left, he said. She walked away from him right there, said she was going to get help to kick the habit and rebuild her life. And she did. She sought treatment, found her self-confidence again, and in time met someone new. A few years later, she married a great guy, one who treated her with the respect and love she deserved. They've been together for almost 30 years now, with three kids and a happy life. She got her second chance, and she took it. But the groom? The ogre? He didn't change. He kept up his bad habits, got deeper into the S, and things just went downhill from there. Years later, in our thirties, I heard the news that shook me to my core. The guy had gotten into a relationship with someone new, but it ended in the worst way possible. High on the same candy he'd once pushed on his fiancée, he snapped. In a fueled rage, he ended up killing his girlfriend and then taking his own life. It was a tragedy, a story that still haunts me.